Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. There is confirmation that Jurian Timber will be back versus Manchester City. And we have done a video on Kossi's Arsenal podcast detailing why Arsenal will win the title courtesy of Jurian Timber. If you've not watched that video, it is called the title decider. Go there, try to search for it, watch it. That is the thumbnail. And I've just understood why Mikel Arteta signed Jurian Timber. In this video, what we're going to do is dive into the latest around Arsenal. We'll talk about um, Azure and Timber coming back. We'll talk about of course Arsenal's striker Saj which is leading us to Victor Jokares. I like the guy. He's a very very good striker but of course the prices there that are being mentioned I'm not in agreement with. We'll talk about the new goalkeeper Saj as Aaron Ramsdale is now eyeing an exit at Arsenal and Cedric Suarez has made his, de his decision. He will be leaving Arsenal at the end of the campaign as a free agent hit the like button subscribe to the channel as well let's get this video to 300 likes let me know in the comment box below um do you think that arsenal should sign victor jokarez or should we focus on victor Osime? now there is a big debate right there on twitter whether victor jokarez is the much better option since he's a little bit in form as compared to victor Osime, who has had quite a silent year as compared to last season where he was absolutely very very good do you think we should go with um the proven awesome man. he's done it for quite some time or should we go with the inform option who is victor joker is really good at the moment i really really tell you he's got a hat trick again uh last night which actually makes him uh one of the top scorers not only in the portuguese league but also in europe right about now so let's get into it first and foremost we start off with that big story coming in from football london and uh, kaya kainak says uh, julian timba is, is set to make his return after this international break that is confirmed. So Football at London, they're confirming that uh, Timber will be coming back. Of course, say, there is a couple of other re uh, reports as well confirming the same story. And I think it's just perfect for Arsenal. It's just perfect for Mikel Arteta. I think he gets to get one of his best defenders um, when he needs him most. We get to get we get to see Julian Timber in a situation and in a run of games where Arsenal are not going to be breathing. We start off with Manchester City. That will be on the 31st of March and that will be the last game Arsenal play in this month. After that, it's going to be absolutely very, very difficult. We'll play Bayern both home and away in April. But then in that same month, Arsenal will play Brighton. Arsenal will play... Um, Aston Villa and then we'll play Luton as well so we have a couple of games I think around six or seven games in April but two of those games or three of those games include vicious opponents and that's why I think Timber coming back at this point in time it is just perfect it is advantage Arsenal once again I don't even care about injuries and who is going to be uh, you know out of the squad I think it just helps Mikel Arteta with rotation it helps us to have um, a solid back line against solid attacks I, look Man City, I don't care what people say, they are still a very good side. They are still uh, a very competent side. And I think Arsenal are going to really feel the effects of that game. We are on top of the Premier League table. By the time we play, Liverpool will have played. And regardless of what will come out of the Liverpool fixture, it still goes back to will Arsenal win against City? Because if Liverpool don't win, that means that Arsenal will have the advantage to go a point clear or three points clear of Liverpool and uh, around five or six points, uh, sorry, five or four points clear of Manchester City if we beat them. If Liverpool win, it means that Arsenal definitely have to beat Manchester City in order for us to, to stay in the same, you know, at the same level as Liverpool as we wait for them to drop points, right? And of course, you don't want to put, drop points at um, the end of uh, April because that means at the end of March because that means that uh, you're going into April with a bit of low confidence, right? So it's for me, it's advantage. Arsenal. Him coming back at this time, it's much more important than him playing the previous games because the previous games, I think Arsenal have been really remarkable. Kivy has been really good, and Alexander Zichenko will also be coming back, and he will be, uh, you know, helping Arsenal with um 
you know a lot of you know squad rotation and options as well so timber coming back uh, for me is something big and i hope to see him in this arsenal colors getting much better getting much fitter and also you know helping us in um uh, in the uefa champions league i think that is where the difference is going to be or you know in my case it is in the uefa champions league listen um the quality that is remaining in the champions league man uh, i think arsenal really really quality but by you know Bayern, barcelona um, the names only, Manchester City, uh, Real Madrid, right? So on top of Arsenal being a big name, because we are a big name, we have um, never won the Champions League, but we are a respected entity in Europe. I think what Arsenal will have an, as, adva as an advantage is two things. The current form that we have and nobody else shares in, that is number one that uh, you know I think Arsenal will have. But then the other thing that we will have is an organized set of players a very young group of players but very very organized they don't have the pedigree but they're organized and really talented so if Mikel Arteta can put together a decent 11 home and away against Bayern and maybe a decent 11 home and away against whoever play whoever wins um the Manchester City Real Madrid side Arsenal could be in the final with a much better you know with a much better advantage we run more we press better, we're scoring more goals, and we're not conceding chances. So with all that, you add Jurian Timber back in the mix. Someone needs to pray for these Champions League sides, and someone really needs to play uh, to pray for this um, for this Premier League sides that we are really going to meet. Because this Arsenal side, it is not showing any weaknesses. We are not showing any uh, emotional weakness, physical weakness, um, I don't see any cognitive weaknesses and I still don't see any other you know loopholes uh, in terms of squad squad selection training and tactics so timber coming back for me guys uh, it is kind of the icing on the cake but also the game changer for Mikel Arteta as he will want to create a difference in both the Premier League and the UEFA Champions League. Now, as we move on to the next big story, uh, let's discuss Arsenal strikers because it looks like Arsenal are now in deep negotiations, in, you know, internal negotiations to decide on who is going to be our next striker come next summer. So, according to Court of Side, Victor Jokeris is emerging as an increasingly strong target for Arsenal, with a new striker as um, with a new striker a priority for the club this summer. The club are yet to finalize the decision on who will be their main target, but. It it is understood that they have been getting information on the cost of the potential deal for Victor Jokeris, which is likely to be below 100 million euros. He's really close, though still it is still uh, it will be still um, uh, costing a significant fee. So that is Victor Jokeris, and many people are really uh, out there saying that they would love to see this uh, celebration down at the Emirates Stadium. Uh, let me know in the comment box below. The question I've asked you is: Do you think Jokeris is the guy to go for, or should ask? not actually sign um, Victor Osimhen. Osimhen is more like the guy who has done it for some two, three consecutive seasons. And Joker is the guy who has popped out of nowhere. But he is good, guys. He is scoring goals. And you love to see it. He is Swedish as well. So we could as well have a competitor for Alexander Isak in the Premier League. But let's dive into the main aspects of this article. And I don't think the main aspects of this article are actually Victor Jokeres, in my opinion. I think the main aspect of this article is the fact that Arsenal are increasingly uh, confident that their main target is going to be a striker and they are in internal discussions to decide who is going to be the guy that we actually go for. I think Mikel Arteta and Edward have, this, uh, have, have now agreed that this team needs a striker. We have done the baking. We need the icing on the. Uh, we, we need the icing sugar, and I think that icing on the cake is going to be a top level number nine. Now there are a couple of options out there, and I want to really. I'm desperate. I'm eager to see who are Arsenal really going to go for as main target. It could be Osimhen, and it could be Ivan Tony. Now, in my opinion, I'm, I'm a little bit reserved when it comes to Arsenal transfers and um, targets, especially uh, under Mikelata and Eru. I don't think we are actually going to have a massive change in options. I don't think Arsenal are going to have um, a, a, a big drift away from Osimhen and Ivan Tony. I think Fabrizio said that Arsenal appreciate Tony and we appreciate Osimhen as well. So it's going to be 
Osman number one, and number two, it's going to be Ivan Tony. And I think the the, the, the the thinking around it is going to be if Arsenal maybe cannot compete with the outfits out there, like Chelsea on Osimhen, then our second priority target is going to be Ivan Tony. We have looked at him for some time, we have wanted him for quite some time, and we have followed him for quite some time. Now, Victor Jokorez is an interesting prospect because, in my opinion, Blahovic should be number three. But maybe you they are now more confident in themselves and they would prefer to keep Dusan Blahovic rather than cashing in cashing on him in the summer. So that puts Victor Jokeres right in number three. And I don't see Arsenal really miss out on option one, option two, and then option three. I don't really see that. Um with whatever we did with Declan Rice, it it, it really shows you that Arsenal are now really more proactive rather than reactive in the transfer window. Ever since Arsenal missed out on Lisandro Martinez and we also missed out on um, on Rafinha in the same transfer window, Mikel Arteta and Herd have, uh, have decided to do their background work. They've decided to work on deals a little bit earlier rather than uh, you know, rather than on deadline, I mean, rather than uh, you know meeting deadlines and uh, you know uh, do deals a little bit later. So I imagine and I presume at this point in time, Arsenal have already talked to the player that we want to sign as main target, although he has not been revealed yet. And Arsenal have talked to the entrage of the player. And I also presume that Arsenal have contacted the club that um uh that will be selling the striker we want to to buy. And we have asked about the price. We have asked about the terms and conditions. And we have asked about um you know all the incentives that could actually drive the deal. So I won't be surprised at any point in time, in my opinion, I won't be surprised if Arsenal, out of the blue, in next month in April, reports flood the, f flood the, uh, the internet that Arsenal have decided to go for striker ABC and they are confident they will get the deal done. So for me, it's still up there. It is still Ivan Tony and Victor Osimhen, and maybe the likes of uh, Victor Jokeres, the likes of Victor Boniface, the likes of um, uh, you know, Sahu Girasi and all these other strikers that have been linked with Arsenal could come in in the second tier of Arsenal's transfer target priorities. But why I think Victor Jokeres is going to be an I interesting situation? Sporting Lisbon, no. He might not have another season. And I don't think they will be panicking to sell. I don't think they will be desperate to sell. But they know when you have a player who gets such a campaign, when you have a player who gives you such numbers, it is time for you to sell. He is 25. That is the right age. His ceiling is, um, uh, is a little bit higher now because of that campaign. And the 100 million euros, of course, they know they are not going to get that, but they can get something close to that. 70 to 75 million euros, I think that can get the deal done. We have seen what happened with Brendan Kolomuani around 70 to 75. And we have also seen what happened to, uh, wh what happened with PSG uh, as they were signing um, uh, the, the Portuguese striker from Benfica. I've just forgotten the name. It's always between 70 to 75 million euros, right? Goncalo Ramos, I think. B because they have had one season at the top and because they are not yet established top strikers, you can't be charging the hundreds of millions. But even when they get 70 million, even when they get 75 million, Sporting Lisbon, that is huge money and they will have done well. So let's wait and see whether Arsenal are really going to lock in the interest on um, Victor Jokeres. He's a sensation, an absolute, absolute uh, sensation, in my opinion. Now, uh, still, according to, uh, according to, um, uh, according to Football London, Thomas Partey will be available for Arsenal against Manchester City. He's another player, just like Julian Timber, who'll be coming back in the business end of the campaign. Mikel Arteta is lucky, and we are lucky as Arsenal fans and Arsenal as well, because last season, what we saw was this Arsenal side lacking options. Thomas Pate had run out of gas and he was really, really not himself. There were reports that he was playing with an injury and I really cannot refute this, uh, those reports because Pate was always injured as an, and has always been injured uh, all the time. So this time, it is actually the opposite. Pate is coming back rather than leaving for injury. Timba is coming back rather than leaving and the likes of William Saliba and Gabriel Magalhães at the moment so far are still very very solid and very available so what i want to see with this arsenal side and the one thing i want to see us do is utilize the depth 
that we have against Bayern if it is okay for us to play Partey and Declan Rice or Partey and Gino it's okay for us to do that against Manchester City if we can play Partey and Rice or Partey and Gino or Partey Rice to Gino uh, as uh, you know that uh, midfield three it is okay for us to do that I want to see Mikel Arteta utilizing the quality and depth that he has at the moment because then there's no reason for us to celebrate. There's no reason for us to uh, think about all these options if Mikel Arteta is actually not going to use them. Arsenal are in the market for a new goalkeeper as uh, it looks like Ramsdale is eyeing an exit. We've talked about this before. In my opinion, it is even too late for us to think about uh, a, a new goalkeeper. With Ramsdale, I think his, his, his future has been decided within a very short period of time. Within four days... Um, his, this, his future was already decided. He made a massive error, a massive mistake against Brentford. And three days later, or four days later, David Dreyer saves two world-class penalties. Maybe not world-class penalties, but two penalties to progress Arsenal to the quarterfinals of the UEFA Champions League. He doesn't have a chance against David Dreyer at the moment. Not this season, not next season, not the season after that. But the challenge for Mikel Arteta now is who do you bring in and what are you going to look out for in a new goalkeeper? Is it going to be the age and experience? Is it going to be a younger goalkeeper uh, with a lot of talent and uh, a lot of enthusiasm about, for, for the game, enthusiasm about Arsenal and enthusiasm you know, to, to overthrow the incumbent goalkeeper? What are we really going to look out for? I'm looking at goalkeepers in, you know, Arsenal interested in goalkeepers in Spain, goalkeepers in, um, uh, in, 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 in the US. I really am not sure what we're trying to do with all these goalkeepers, but I, you can you can trust me, I will find out. Cedric Suarez has made his decision. He will be leaving Arsenal at the end of the campaign, and that has been communicated through uh, the club hierarchy, and of course the big journalists there in Fabrizio Romano have also confirmed it. So according to Romano, Cedric Suarez will leave Arsenal as a free agent in the summer. Decision made. Portuguese right-back main re remains fully committed to the club until June. As top professional, then he will leave. Many clubs in Europe considering Cedric as a top option for the summer on a free transfer. I'm not really sure what to say about this because, I mean, he is a loyal guy and he is a good servant. I, I cannot sit here and start blabbering about him not being a good guy. I think he is a good guy. But like I said in the morning, this Arsenal project is moving quickly and it is leaving many players behind. Cedric, behind, Lokonga, Nuno Tavares, Emil smith Rowe. Edin Ketia, Rhys Nelson, Mohamed El Nani. All those are players that can no longer compete with the quality and talent that Arsenal have at the moment, right? So I think all I'm going to say is that I wish the best for um, Cedric in his next journey. And I pray that he doesn't meet Arsenal again because we will be a much deadlier side in the coming years. We might actually embarrass him. But for now, good night.